Before the success stories, the progress, there was you. You who made a choice to grow, to inspire, to overcome your own challenges. At NASM, we're in service of your limitless potential because when you keep growing, we all get stronger and we'll never stop making your journey our mission. Join the fitness leader. Become a fitness leader. Become a certified personal trainer. You're listening to the NASM CPT Podcast with Rick Ritchie, winner of the Share Care Emmy Award for Social Storytelling and the official podcast of the National Academy of Sports Medicine. Hey, y'all, and welcome to the NASM CPT Podcast. My name is Rick Ritchie, and today we're going to be talking about preparing to speak at fitness conferences. Why? Well, two reasons. One, because I'm about to. And two, I think that there are a lot of you that are listening to this that love the idea of that. What about being able to speak at conferences? Which conferences are available? What can I go to? There are a lot of questions that you have, but most people, when they come up and talk to me, they say, I want to be able to do what you're doing. And so at the end of a conference, I get that question a lot. So to snip it before it even happens, let's talk about it now because I'm in deep as I'm preparing for the Idea World 2024 conference. It has been one of my favorite conferences, if not my favorite, for years now. And I'm looking forward to going to Los Angeles and speaking at Idea World. And so for me, getting ready to do this starts almost a year in advance. So when these conferences that have been around for a while, what they do generally is they know already uh, years in advance. Usually they sign multiple year deals with conference centers and different things like that. Maybe it's a big hotel room with multiple um, ballrooms and things like that at conference centers there. They're going to be able to book that that facility. So they know in advance. Now what they do is they say, all right, now we need people to submit. And those submissions are due almost a year, I would say 10 months prior to the event itself even taking place. So basically here's what happens. I speak at Idea World. After I'm done speaking at Idea World, we get uh, feedback, they do um, evaluations, and the evals come back. And as soon as the evals come back, it's basically, all right, now submit for the next year. So here's what we're going to look at first. Number one is you got to look at what are the submissions. And submissions are going to be topics that you have expertise in. And you're going to submit multiple topics because that's going to give you an increased opportunity and likelihood for any one of them to get accepted because they what they do is they get multiple topics from multiple people and then they look at it and they say oh man we've we've got 30 topics where somebody's going to talk about corrective exercise well that means that about 28 of you are not going to be able to talk about corrective exercise or they'll do corrective exercise for the shoulder this for the foot and ankle and this is and so you kind of get Piece by piece, they'll say, okay, we got this. But then they go, that's enough corrective exercise. We need to create a variety for thousands of people to come through. So we can't just have a bunch on corrective exercise. We can't just have a bunch on indoor cycling. We can't have over and over multiple kettlebell training classes. So if you do all of those, that's great. But you got to submit and say, all right, well, I'm going to talk about the kettlebells. I want to talk about indoor cycling because that's my thing. And I like doing corrective exercise. And my real focus is foot and ankle. All right. All right. So be specific. Talk about foot and ankle. You're going to submit those. And the categories for submission could be a lot of different things that maybe you didn't think about because there's personal training. And then there's group exercise. And some conferences are personal training only, but big fitness conferences like Idea World are going to have the following categories. There's going to be personal training. There's group exercise. They're going to have nutrition options. So if you want to learn about nutrition, then that's a topic. Or if you want to teach on nutrition, there are topics that you can teach on, but you have to have the expertise to be able to speak to that. Indoor cycling, 
Then they have a separate category, not personal training, but it's exercise science and research. And when you get to the exercise science and research, there's one thing about programming and putting together workouts and exercise selection, but the exercise science could be a lot different. It could be about mTOR pathways. It could be new research. We learn about human growth hormone as it gets produced endogenously through increased volume of exercise. And, and um, you could look at metabolic pathways and then it's going to be research heavy. It's going to show you research science and content like that. And there's not done. Then there's your mind body. That's going to be yoga, Pilates, bar, things like that. And then there's a whole different section on business. Business for all of those people, personal trainers, group exercise, program director, directors, managers, all of that becomes an option. So here's what you're going to do <clears throat> as you decide. All right. Well, first of all, let me identify what's the topic. Is it going to be personal training, group, business, exercise science? And then you come up with a title. And the title is, uh, you know, it's got to be of interest. I would say try to be a little bit catchy. And I'll tell you the titles of mine in just a moment. <clears throat> and then that'll hopefully allow you to get a better idea of what we're talking about. But then after the title, you're going to do like a small paragraph, a blurb so to speak. This is what I'm, this idea that I've come up with or this topic that I've taught before, but now I'm doing it and I'm going to tweak a few things and I'm going to submit it for this conference specifically. This is a small paragraph about this particular session. After you do the blurb, the next thing you're going to do is create about four objectives or four takeaways for the attendees. So you're looking at title, the paragraph, but then here's the takeaway. So the takeaway could be uh, at the end of the session, personal trainers are going to have a better understanding of planes of motion. At the end of this paragraph, they're going to have a deeper knowledge of joint actions that happen in each plane. The next one might be the after uh, taking this course, attendees will know how to better incorporate joint actions and planes of motion into their training protocols. All right, so you're putting the objectives or the takeaways. And then the last thing in that list that I have right now, and there may be a lot of things I'm missing, but it's going to be what equipment do you need? Are you going to be playing music? Are you going to use um, uh, equipment? Do you need a band? Do you need medicine balls? Do you need steps or risers or vibrating platforms? And you kind of go down the list of what what is my dream of having? And then it really then depends on what the conference can provide for you. So the conference is going to go to different equipment companies, particularly ones that are already there, and say, can you sponsor this session with foam rollers? Can you sponsor this session with mini loops? And so they may provide those foam rollers and loops for the session. And then after the conference is over and we get to the expo, they may sell those things for uh, a discounted rate, which is also nice. Also, there's more than likely they're going to give you a, um, a microphone. Always use the microphone. Even if you're like, I project, I have a loud voice. I did this as a coach and I'm loud. And I was in the military, and I'm also loud, or I was just a loud kid, and now I'm a loud adult. It doesn't matter. Just use the microphone. There are people that hear you real loud in the front and people that don't hear you so well in the back, even though they may still be able to hear you. It's nice if you could just talk, and then everybody, no matter where they're sitting, can hear you the same. So that way, if you need to speak up or you need to tone it down, everybody pretty much believes the same thing. And so you're you're feeding the masses in unison without having people overwhelmed in the front and and not really being the most clear in the back. Okay, so after you do this, most likely people are going to be partnered with a fitness company or some brand that is going to increase your likelihood of being accepted as a speaker at the big conferences. Companies will buy booth space, they go to the expo, 
they're in the booth space. They have these big booths. And depending on the size of the booth and the amount of money they spend, they'll get options for being able to submit for a speaker. And then they will say, okay, out of the speaker, we can select this option, this option, because somebody else is doing this topic and somebody else. So they kind of then figure out, and that's why you need to submit a lot of things, because at the end of it, you don't want them to say, uh, you've got four options of speaking at this conference, but we're only going to select two because they they seem to be redundant. So you need to provide a lot of options for people so that the conference does allow that to, to happen. You can fill in those spaces. Now, I bet you can imagine, but I will be representing NASM at the upcoming Idea World 2024. I have presenter friends that own their own businesses and they have booths and they work for universities or equipment brands or education companies and supplement companies and on and on and on. And those friends and fellow speakers are there oftentimes because of booth space and they are the business and so they get access. Now, some of the smaller conferences, it doesn't work that way. So some of the smaller conferences are the conferences where you as an individual have more likelihood of being able to just submit. Now, you can still just submit, but you have limited likelihood of being accepted uh, especially if they are not familiar with you and how you teach and your education, your background. I think the, the idea here is that some of these companies, these big companies, are able to attract uh, educated, experienced speakers. And those educated, experienced speakers then get spaces on the stage. Doesn't mean you can't. It doesn't mean you can't. So you may have to submit a video or something like that just to be able to find out if, if you can um, to go to some of these smaller ones and then progress and build your resume and go to a larger one. Now, here's the next one. Number three, find out if the conference is going to pay, pay for your room, pay for your board, pay for your flights, pay you for your time and your expertise. So you need to make sure that it is worth it for you. Now, for instance, some of the companies, the conferences will pay the speakers. And sometimes it is the, the, um, the presenting company. So like NASM will pay for my flight and they will pay for my board and they will pay for my flights and all that stuff um, <clears throat> or my room. So it just kind of depends on where you are, who you're working with and the setup. Now. The next one is that now you've submitted, you find out if they pay and you find out what they cover because if it's not worth it to you, then you may not want to even submit for it because if you submit for it and they accept it and they're like, no, we we don't pay you or you will pay you, but you have to pay for your own flight, then that might not be worth it for you. So that's something that you simply have to identify and see if it's going to work for you. Now, most conferences are going to cover those things, but it is better that you find out before you submit than after you submit or before you agree. So now you've submitted everything. You're learning more about uh, payment. You have an idea of what your expertise are and the topic and the blurb and objectives. And now it's time just to sit back and wait. And it can take months before you have any idea as to whether or not your submissions are accepted. And so you wait for a response or for acceptance or rejection. And for instance, I submitted nine sessions. Of those nine, only three were accepted. So nine sessions, only three were accepted. I will tell you all here are the nine that I submitted. The Partner Assisted Stretching Workshop, which... I've done partner assisted stretching sessions at the conference. I was trying to get like a four to six, even an eight hour partner assisted stretching pre-con. Um, didn't get that, but that was something I was really excited about. Freebird, going independent as a personal trainer. The sweet science, understanding type two diabetes and how exercise helps. The benefits, uh, number four, the benefits of physical activity on 20 plus pathologies. The next one, anatomy basics, muscles, bones, planes, and directions. The next one, number six, a learning to program with the NASM OPT model. The next one, self-administered muscle energy techniques. 
The next one, towel training, the most challenging workout tool you already have. And then the final one, number nine, the disturbing dangers of physical inactivity. The ones that were selected, Freebird, going independent as a personal trainer, the disturbing dangers of physical inactivity, and the, which one? Learning to program with the NASM OPT model. I knew I'd figure it out in a second. Uh, and that one, I will actually be partner presenting with my friend and colleague, Dr. Marty Miller. So uh, three of them were accepted. And one of those three, I'm partnering with a colleague from NASM so we can work together to teach. I'm excited about that because we used to teach workshops all the time. NASM used to teach workshops I feel like every single weekend all over the country, there was some workshop going on and we would fly all over the country. And at one point there was just eight of us that were teaching all of these workshops. And Marty was one of those guys and he was there before me. And so I actually, um, I would watch him. He started a year before me. He, Wendy Batts and Tony Ambler Wright, who are all still with the company. And they, they would teach. And so I would go and I would watch them present. And then the next time I would present a small section. And the next time I would teach, I would present a little bit bigger section until eventually they would sit back and watch me present and take notes and then turn it into NASM. So this is how the development process went for educators and speakers for, uh, for, for the NASM. And now you know, we're we're all working together in co-teaching, which we did for, for years and years and years, and it'll be fun to get back to doing that. So remember, I submitted nine, only three were selected. And for me, that's disappointing. I would I wanted four, minimum four. I was happy that I got three, and I'm definitely happy that I'm team teaching with Marty Miller. All right, so moving on. Wait, we've waited for a response. My three got selected. Great. So now the next thing you have to do, number five in this kind of list of things, is prepare your slides based on the following things. Number one, the time allotted. Idea world. I'm putting together my slides, and all of a sudden I'm like, man, I this I'm preparing for a 50-minute session. And this might be a two hour session. And sure enough, I go and look it up and it is one hour and 50 minutes for each of these. So some of them are an hour or 50 minutes and then they, they do more throughout the day and they get a 10 minute break or so. Um, this is an hour 50. Some of them are an hour and a half. Some of them, you know what I mean? Like they just, they differ in time. But if you don't know the length of time to prepare for, if you prepare for 50 minutes and you have a whole nother hour that you're just trying to riff, that may not go over, over very well. I'm assuming those evaluations may not come back strong if for an hour you're just like, I don't know what do you want to talk about now. I don't know. You are the person that's teaching the session. You are supposed to have prepared everything to be speaking about. Doesn't mean that you don't leave time for questions and answers, but Q&A usually isn't an hour. So prepare for the time allotted. Next thing. You need to have the title that you submitted on your title page. As you're putting that together, you have to have that. All of the work that you do has to be based on the title, on the description, and on the objectives that you already submitted. What you don't want to do is submit for something and say, this is the title, and be like, I don't really remember what I submitted to them, but this is what I think it was. And your version of what you think it is versus what you told them you were going to speak on, if they don't align, it won't go over very well. I'm telling you the evaluations are really the issue because the, the people are picking your sessions, not just because you got a catchy title, free bird, going independent as a personal trainer, free bird. I like that. But then you don't talk about the things that you told them you were going to talk about then it's not going to go over very well. So when you start preparing your slideshow, you put your title on the title page, you put your objectives on the next page. These are the four things you can expect to walk out of this room with in one hour and 50 minutes from now, and then deliver that. Okay. Um, also the next thing, you need to know that there are rules at every single conference. 
And the conference having rules is important for you to know because what can happen is they might say, you can't put any advertisements up there. I know that you've got books that you may want to sell or you got equipment that you want to sell, um, <laughs> but that's that's not okay. That's not something that we do at these conferences. Now, some conferences don't care. Some conferences are totally fine with it. Uh, some conferences are, it's about the people, it's about the clients, it's about the conference, and you are making it about you as a sales pitch. And that is not the purpose of the presentation. The purpose of the presentation is to provide information that you already told them you were going to give. Um, another one, this is this is a new one that, that we've gotten is I use Canva for a lot of photos, but because this goes out to more people besides you, then they're asking this year that we only use open source images. And so using open source images uh, like Unsplash or uh, um, Pixels maybe is another website where you can get open source images. That's for you too. If you need open source Im images, just go for it and check out that site. I think it's a, it's a good site. It's got some really nice photos in it. And that's what I will be using for almost every single slide that I have, except for the stuff that NASM has agreed to let me use. Okay, once you are done and you're booking, you're uh, preparing the slides and all of that stuff, you also, you got to book your flight, you got to book your hotel rooms, you got to coordinate with the conference uh, and see if they're doing that stuff for you. And then usually they want that information. Tell me when your flight's coming in, Tell me when you're gonna, which hotel you're staying at. They want to know a lot of information because if something goes on and you miss a flight or the flight gets canceled or delayed, which mine literally got delayed and canceled the night before I left to, to go to Idea World a few years ago. And had I not got on the flight by, by using the app, had I gone to wait in line where everybody else was, I just used the app to, to switch and get on the next flight. I would have missed the reception of my personal training, uh, personal trainer of the year award from Idea World. And so that would have been devastating. So they want to know when your flights are coming in and stay up to date. So find your contact person with the conference. Let them know, hey, my flights got delayed. My flights delayed. My, fl my flights canceled. Hey, don't worry. I just rebooked. I'm going to get in after midnight, but I will be there first thing in the morning because, uh, you know, that's I'm getting in after midnight, going to the hotel, sleep, wake up early, and I'll be ready to go. Cool. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to submit a PDF of your slides so that the attendees can have that in advance of coming to your session. So what they're going to do is they're going to have, let's say you've got 30 slides. They have either the content or a PDF small version of those slides so that they can read it, they can take notes on there, that they have the information that you're talking about in their hands, on their devices, something that they can see. And that can help them to, to learn the information. It's also great. I, people love taking notes. I think it's a great opportunity. And they encourage everybody, make sure that you get your slides turned in, your PDFs of your sessions so that people can follow along with you. They have access to it. It's a great idea. Uh, mine were due on Friday. And because I had the emergency where I had to go out of town that week, then I finished it over this weekend and will be turning mine in today. Sorry, Idea World. They're on their way. Um, next thing, be familiar with your content. Review your slides. Be ready to impress Get that first story out of the way, the first line, the first thing that you want to say, the engagement, the, the thing that draws in people, but you doesn't matter if you zing them in the beginning and then you peter out with poor content. So know your content, review your slides, be familiar with the information that you're speaking on. Remember, you're only submitting things that you already have expertise in. So remind yourself of the expertise, the direction that you're going, what it is you're going to be speaking about. Prepare your kind of opening and closing statements that you want to add and go knock it out of the park. Next thing, bring your own dongles, your own clickers, your own pointers, all of those things. Sometimes uh, there might be like a HDMI. Well, if you don't have HDMI, 
uh, in your computer. Like you have a MacBook Air, which I don't know if the new ones do, but I know some of the old ones maybe didn't have the HDMI. If you do things on an iPad Pro, then you may have to uh, screencast into something. If like the old computers, ha I don't even know what they're called, but you need little screws to come in, all the ports and blah, 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 I don't know. Um, and so you'd have to have a dongle just to, to get it to work on your Mac or to get it to work uh, on your laptop that you had because not everything was uniform. Now, HDMI is pretty universal across the board, but that might change soon. And if it does, then you have an HDMI port. You're going to have to prepare for that. Uh, things might be coming around to USB-C ports. Just make sure you've got a dongle that works with your computer and whatever they're going to be providing. So you may have to have several options. Uh, it's funny, like we presenters tend to bring our own clickers and our clickers might have a laser pointer on it in case we need to point at anything on the board. Uh, so many of us have our own and so many of us will say, hey, I forgot my clicker. Do you have one? I need to borrow a clicker. Does anybody have a clicker? Just know that you, know, you don't want to be the one that forgets yours, but you definitely don't want to be the one that lets somebody borrow it and then forgets to get it back. So uh, know that that's there. And the last thing I want to say, number 10, because I've kind of gone through a bunch of things, is use this opportunity for you as an educator, as a professional, to network, to support the conference and the organization that brought you there. And take this opportunity, it's one of my absolute favorite things to do, to go to other educators' sessions for free. They're paying for you to get there. That means that you have access to go to the conference for free. You're getting paid. And now you get to watch these people speak for free. I can go and I can see Peter Twist and I can see Pete Holman. I can, I can see uh, Kia and I get to see uh, Billy Blanks and I get to do jumping jacks with Elaine LaLanne and I get to do all this stuff and I'm doing this for free. And so uh, these are kind of the guidelines of the things that in order for you to be able to speak at a conference, it might be something that you want to do in the future. And this is just uh, a day, a week, uh, a preparation in the life of somebody that presents and does several presentations at multiple different conferences throughout the year. Um, this is the big one that I'm preparing for, Idea World 2024, and it's just an opportunity for me to give you a little feedback in case it's something that you may want to do. Things like Idea PTI, the Personal Trainer Institute for, I mean, your CPT, so your personal trainers listening to this, then that might be the one that you want to submit for in the future because that one you don't necessarily need to have um, uh, an NASM to, to say, hey, we've got expo space. Do you want to speak at this conference on our behalf? You can speak at it on your own behalf. You can speak at it on behalf of the attendees who have something that they want to learn from you because you have expertise in a topic that they find valuable. Thanks for listening. Like, subscribe, share with your fitness friends and family. And if you don't mind, go on to the platform you listen to, Apple, Google, leave a five-star review, and then Tell us why. Why is it that you like the podcast? And that is actually quite helpful for us because it allows people to find the podcast more easily. If you want to reach out to me, hit me up. You can do it on Instagram at dr.rickritchie or email me rick.ritchie at nasm.org. Y'all keep inspiring people to fitness. Thanks for listening. This has been the NASM CPT Podcast.